Hello, hello friend. How are you doing today? My name is Mary. This is Happily Ever Esh and today we have a big ol' fall book haul. I have been thrifting quite a lot these past couple months in August and September and I have quite a good little stack. Most of these books are thrifted. A couple were ones that I picked up at independent bookstores and then a couple book of the month club picks. Let's get into it. So. I've broken my books up into different categories, so we're going to start with the Goodwill thrifted books, and the first one I was so pleased to find. It's a book that I don't think I've heard of before, but just was so striking, like seeing it sit on the shelf with this like little half um, sleeve, which is so fun, but like, oh my gosh, look at the cover. Yosemite, so beautiful. And this is The Hour of Land, a personal topography of America's national parks by Terry Tempest Williams. And whoever bought it, I do believe, um, was at Yellowstone when they when they bought this book, because there's a bookmark in there. Um, but just gorgeous. I am a nature lover. <laughs> My husband and I love to camp. We really hope to instill that in our children, the love of nature. And I think that our national lands um, need to be protected. And I'm so interested to hear this voice. I've already, um, the back just sounds, I mean, just listen. We have arrived at the hour of land. We have made mistakes, mistakes in our relationships with those who have come before us and the land that holds their histories, mistakes in how we have managed and misunderstood the wild. But after spending a lifetime immersed in our national parks, I believe we are slowly learning what it means to offer our reverence and respect to the closest things we have to sacred lands. It sounds so good. Can't wait to read it. And I found this for a couple books at Good well you can't beat it it's gorgeous let me tell you so i was so excited this is probably one of my favorite finds so we're really starting off with a bang here next from the goodwill we have erotic stories for punjabi widows by bali kaur Jaswal. i believe that she wrote the unlikely adventures of the sisters i'm i will put a picture here i'm not exactly sure on the title it was published after this but i'm really interested in reading this modern mrs darcy and bogle has spoken really highly of this book um but i found this one and i've heard good things not as much as as her other release but i thought why not we'll give it a try this sounds really like funny but also really like an importantly and compellingly told story. I believe this is about a community of women who kind of come together and share their stories and tell their stories. So it almost maybe has like a short story feel, which I'm very into. So um, I'm really excited to try this author. And you know, I have found a lot of luck with Reese's book club picks. So this is a fun one to add to my collection for a few dollars. Another one that I haven't heard of, but I'm looking for more essay collections because my husband and I have really been enjoying reading short forms of literature to one another and it's it's a way that we can kind of dip in and out and aren't like super committed to a long novel and so I found this one which I think will strike both of our interests well and that's The Flight of the Iguana, A Sidelong View of Science and Nature by David Kwa Men. I know he's kind of a giant in like nature writing or at least this book makes it seem that way um, but yes I'm just interested in what he has to say I again a nature person I love nature writing I love people exploring humans relationships with nature and vice versa so I do think that this will be a great one to pick up I do think in particular this is looking more at wildlife so I'm very interested to, to see this one this book was compiled and published in the 80s but some of his writings because it was done for different magazines might be older so a little bit of a modern classic in its own right maybe so excited about this one next was one i could not believe my luck in finding and that's bear town by frederick bachman this one is a booktube giant a booktube darling however you want to think about it so many people love this book I, funnily enough, own the sequel to this um, because I found it at a library book sale, like brand new hardcover. I think our library had overbought a lot of new really popular releases and we're like getting rid of some of them through um, library book sales. So I picked that one up but didn't have Beartown and now I do. I've read one of Frederick Brockman's works and I liked it. It, it was borderline too quirky for me, like a little too unrealistic. Um, so I'm interested to see how I feel about this one, but I definitely liked the book that I read enough that I want to try more of his work and people love, love, love this book. So I'm going to give it a go. 
deals with some really heavy, hard themes, sexual assault, um, small town loyalties, sports, hockey. It's a mixed bag. So I'm ready to see what camp I fall in. Am I going to love it? Am I not? I don't know. I hope I love it. I do. Um, but I have it and I'm going to read it maybe this winter. It seems like a cold weather book. Next is the middle grade that I was so excited to find. Um, and that's The World's Greatest Detective by Caroline Carlson. Look at this fun cover, like little 1930s detective action here. So fun. This was recommended in Krista's compilation of middle grade recommends from like a bunch of different booktubers and it was one that really drew my interest because it was a mystery and I love mysteries but I haven't read a ton of middle grade mysteries at least not as an adult and the the way that this was talked about was just such a fun little romp I couldn't believe my luck and finding this for a couple dollars I just gosh I think it's gorgeous and I'm always down to add some fun middle grade to my shelf another XA collection and this is by Barbara Kingsolver and it's small wonders again I think it's about the world and her relationship with these kind of explore all different things the back says the Grand Canyon her vegetable garden motherhood genetic engineering um, or the future of a nation founded on the best of all human impulses I mean, the list goes on, but I, I want to hear what Barbara Kingsolver has to say. I've never read any Kingsolver, but I own a few of her books. But again, I think that this sounded like something my husband and I could really enjoy together. And also, it's just like beautifully published. The, the paper is really heavy and there's these like really pretty illustrations on all the essays. So it seemed like a nice book to own. I really hope that my husband and I both get to read this together and enjoy it. Next is one that I've been hemming and hawing on whether I actually want to read it or not but you find it at Goodwill for a couple dollars and I guess it turned into a want and that's Wolf oh that's Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantle so I know she's been nominated for the booker for the third in this trilogy I don't think she made the shortlist um but nonetheless I'm going to give this a go this is like really intense historical fiction set in 1520s in England I must say I'm pretty ignorant about history like pre 1800s so I'm interested to get a taste with some historical fiction um, and she seems to be very beloved but I do think that this is going to be a little more heavy and literary than some historical fiction I read is so we'll see we'll see how this one goes but for a dollar or two I I added it to my pile all right switching gears also thrifted books, but these were thrifted from a different thrift store, one that's like local to me in my area that I absolutely adore. Um, and so the first is a modern classic. And so that's Appointment in Samara by John O'Hara. I've never read any John O'Hara. Um, the back says he's the real F. Scott Fitzgerald. So that's super intriguing to me. I think it's a short little guy. It's set in the 1930s. I think it's like looking at small town politics and kind of slice of life, but maybe with a little more drama. So I don't know. I'm going to give it a try. We've He's been added to my shelf. For some middle grade, we have The Mighty Miss Malone by Christopher Paul Curtis. I am so excited about this. Amanda over at The Curly Reader has said really good things about this book. I was excited to find it and add it to my shelf. Historical fiction set in like Great Depression era. I'm very excited to read it. And then next is middle grade I've heard nothing about, but it was just an intriguing cover and so I wanted to give it a go. And that's Splendors and Glooms by Laura Amy Schultz. And this was a Newbery Honor book. Doesn't it look a little creepy? I do think it is kind of a creepy, has like a mysterious fairy tale feeling, kind of hearkening to like some Charles Dickens um, writing vibes. Um, I don't know a lot about it. I don't really want to know a lot about it. Um, but I am very interested. Look, it's kind of, I might pick it up in October because it just looks a little spooky, a little eerie. And then last but certainly not least from that little thrift store is The Most Fun We Ever Had by Claire Lombardo. This book is a chunk. It's so big. I wasn't expecting it. It's just like a nicely made hardback. Like the paper's really weighty. 
Um, this is a family drama, um, kind of multi-generational story that's gotten a lot of hype in the past couple years. It was published in 2019, so a nice new release to add to my shelf. And I'm always really into family stories, family dramas, and I believe that this is kind of following four sisters and their lives are all seemingly like falling apart and they feel like they can't live up to their parents and like the relationships and the love they had but i think it's kind of breaking down all of those layers what's going on i want to find out i'm here for it so yes i am very interested to try this one um and like the four leaves like what's what's that all about let's let's find out so i'm excited too to hopefully eventually get to this book. I love family dramas like when I read them but I'm never super compelled to pick them up usually because they're really chunky. <laughs> All right, two books that I picked up from independent bookstores on our travels last month. Um, the first one is very specific to where we were going and that's North Shore Adventures, the best hiking, biking, and paddling from Duluth to Grand Portage by Katie Berg. This is a local author. We've been to a lot of these places because we travel to um, Lake Superior or we have traveled to Lake Superior three times and we just, we love the area um, and it's a relatively, it's like a decent trip from where we are drive wise um and i live in the midwest so you just drive everywhere <laughs> planes what planes who not that i would really want to be getting on a plane right now anyway but beside the point gosh i wanted to have this kind of as more just like a fun thing to look back on and see the hikes that we've done um we have not done a lot of kayaking but it's something that we'd like to do in the future like as we continue to explore the area and explore um seeing nature that way um, my husband has to take swim lessons first, <laughs> but then we will be doing some more kayaking. Um, so yes, I, just a fun one to add to my shelf. It's like more of like a souvenir. Um, and then the book that I picked up just for me to read is Two Trees Make a Forest in Search of My Family's Past Among Taiwan's Mountains and Coasts. So this is a travel memoir, um, which I love travel writing, but also our author Jessica Lee is really trying to figure out where she's come from and her family's connection to the land. I'm yes, yes, yes. I love all of that. And it's just a beautiful book. It has French flaps, which I don't know why, but that just makes me so <laughs> happy. Um, so I'm very excited to read this one. I really think memoirs are so good when they're good and I typically find that the travel aspect of stories um, and like finding home is like yes that's kind of my sweet spot with memoirs all right and then this was actually purchased many months ago from a thrift store um, but I forgot to put it in my last July haul and that's the Chilberry Ladies Choir by Jennifer Ryan. This is historical fiction. It's kind of as England is getting involved in World War II, um, this, this town and this group of choir women kind of come together and it's like their stories and what they're dealing with. I love kind of at home stories of war and like what the people are going through as you know so many loved ones are away and fighting. And this kind of seems to be a piece of that. I've heard really good things. And just the cover is really, really pretty too. And I know that doesn't matter, but like still nice. Still nice to have a pretty cover. All right, so those are all the thrifted books. Now on to books that I bought from Krista over at Books and Jams when she was doing her little book sale, book clear off of her shelves. Um, the first one is The One and Only Ivan by Katherine Applegate, which is also a middle grade novel. I've read Wish Tree by Katherine Applegate, maybe some other ones, um, but this one is so beloved. I think it's like bring out the tissues kind of book. It's also like, it looks a little chunky, but when you look at the text, it's very sparse. So I think this will be a quick read. Um, and so I was happy to add this one to my shelves. And then next is a nonfiction, and that's The Soul of an Octopus, A Surprising Exploration into the Wonder of Consciousness by Cy Montgomery. This was definitely a booktube darling a couple years ago. I think Olive over at A Book Olive really kind of sold this. And I think there's so many things going for this um, that make it really appealing to a broad population. There's like psychology kind of like looking into consciousness, popular science aspect, but then there's like animals and like the tenderness that comes with that. So I just think there's like a lot of things that like make this really appealing to lots of readers and I 
I am one of them. I've been kind of on the hunt for this one ever since Spotlight on BookTube. And so, um, yes, I was really pleased when I saw that she had this for sale, I snagged it. So always happy to um, shop other people's shelves. That's a lot of fun. All right, and let's get into my book club picks. So my book of the month club picks for September. I wanted all five of the books. I, <laughs> I always am like that with book of the month club. It's like, I either want none or I want all. <laughs> um, and so it was hard to pick. It was hard to narrow down. But the one that I knew I was getting hands down, no questions asked, was Transcendent Kingdom by Yagasi. I loved Homegoing and this one sounds so beautiful. I was a little disappointed because I thought that this was going to be a pick in August and I was like, are you, they didn't pick Yagasi's new release, but wasn't released until later. So it was a pick <laughs> and um, I was a little salty for no reason. Um, but yes, I loved Homegoing. So many people loved Homegoing for good reason. It was a stellar debut novel that I think has really wide appeal to lots and lots of different readers. I do think this one sounds a little more um, literary, a little more quiet, a little more slow going maybe in its plot. Um, but I can't, I can't wait. It seems to explore the crossover of science and religion and um, grief. I, I am beyond excited for this book. I think it's gonna be so good. I, and it's so pretty, like it's dark black and pink and gold. I mean, it's a gorgeous book. And it's not that long either, so. And then um, for my two add-ons, cause like I said, I probably would have added all four of them if I could. Um, but I decided to go with the last story of Minna Lee by Nancy Joon Kim. I was just so intrigued by this one. It's like a mystery story. Um, mother-daughter drama. Our main character is a first-generation American and so just so many things that I think are going to be wonderful and um, yeah I just I wanted to kind of get one that I hadn't heard of before and so this seemed like a really cool good pick for me and I just I'm always down for a good mystery and that seems to kind of be like really what this book is but then also do a lot of other things as well so I was excited about this one. And then last but certainly not least, one that probably won't be read for a while because I want to read her first publication first, first publication first, um, but still one that I wanted to have on my shelves and just support the nonfiction being an option on book of the month because I love it when they pick nonfiction, but it doesn't happen a lot. So when it does, they typically tend to be memoirs, which is cool and great, but I wanted to support this being a pick and that's cast the origins of our discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. And it kind of does what it says on the tin. It's looking at the caste system in other countries, but also her argument of like how there is one in America and like, how do we move forward from that? Yes, yes, yes. Timely, important, and also I know that I'm going to love her writing and her the way she does her nonfiction, like that narrative style I'm so here for. And so The Warmth of Other Suns, I want to read it before 2020 comes to a close. So fingers crossed, maybe that'll be a nonfiction November goal, but I'm excited to have her second release on my shelf as well. All right, friends, this is quite a lot of books. Don't ask me where I'm gonna put them all. worst thing about filming when your windows are open is <laughs> you're like everyone's like what are you doing girl okay I don't know where I'm gonna put all these books don't ask we'll figure it out later but <laughs> oh goodness I'd love to know have you been thrifting lately have you found any great finds any things that you're super excited about what have you been choosing for your book of the month club pick I want to chat about all of those things down in the comments below. Please like this video if you enjoyed. Please subscribe if you want to see more bookish content from me. I had a little bit of an extended unplanned break in the month of um, end of August, beginning of September. So I have like my top five summer reads I need to film. Um, I still want to be like getting back into my Friday read schedule because I love chatting in that little format. Um, I've got... Um, TB like my fall TBR stuff that I want to be filming so lots of things coming down the pipeline <laughs> eventually so all right friends talk to you later bye